All right, so ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be going into the first game uh, for today, uh, pretty soon here, uh, for Dominate Dominion number 92. Looks like the chat bands are going to be Nidalee, Zyra, LeBlanc, and Annie. And if they're done with chat bands, and oh, River just popped on. Excellent. Okay, um... All right, it looks like I'm going to solo this game, and River will update me with what's going on. Okay, uh, River is sitting this one out, because computer issues. Yeah, Denz, you got me Zach, and Zach's on the list. I remember that. All right, so we just have the last person in the lobby here. Let me copy these champions down real fast. Nidalee, Zyra, LeBlanc, and Annie. No surprise to see the Nid and Zyra bans. A good LeBlanc is absolutely terrifying, and Annie got banned occasionally before. With the Tibbers change, you know, it can, uh, maybe people don't want to deal with that. Okay. And we're just getting the invites sorted out. Let me paste the chat bands in the Twitch chat. And fancy at your comment about uh casting. Uh I'll just I'll just roll like solo the first game. It's it's totally fine. Um Later on, like this month, I might get at you about like a casting related thing. Uh, I'll have more info on that for you later, though, because I haven't got a chance to plan it. Because I want to do something cool when I come back from my uh, like weeks off that I have to work the Renaissance Festival. So I thought it'd be cool if we did a stream and just like cast a bunch of games and stuff. But I can talk to you more about that later. Just a heads up on it is all. Okay. Guys, could we just remake, like, easy mode? We just remake and be easy mode. Invites misbehaving. So currently the league client is up 1-0 against our players this week. We'll see if it gets a, a perfect score or not. There we go. We got it. Yay. Okay, cool. I don't know why my sound is off. All right, going over to the champion select screen. I'm going to get our uh, overlays filled in for you this week. So on the left side, we have jellyfish necklace. And on the right hand side, we have Dango Ninjas. Is that being streamed tonight, Fancy? Because we should send the viewers there after if it's still going on. Oh dear. <laughs> Jellyfish. All right, and the other one is going to be Dango Ninjas. Let me make sure I get the uh, spelling for that correct. Oh, it's Dongo Ninjas this time with some symbols. Okay, add title. Dongo Ninjas. Minor name change. You should go look at the bracket if you haven't. 
for what their name was this week. Oh, let's uh, scoot this up a little bit more. There we go. And let's get the extra bands filled in on the screen here for you. Oh, did I miss Marvel today? So what's up, Katya underscore seven? Thanks for checking out the uh, stream today. Microball asks, where is River? River's computer peed the carpet. Okay, and the extra bands were Nidalee, Zyra, LeBlanc, and Annie. So it looks like the first pick we're going to see, we're going to see Brand locked in right away. Brand, very good AP champion. Lots of AoE damage. She's very good at zoning, has a stun. Brand brings a lot of good things to the table. Tends to be just a tad more durable than other ranged uh, APs. Zounds, if you reset the game with another Zyra, last week somebody accidentally like locked in Zyra when she was chat banned, and then everything went hoo-ha. And we had to remake the game. Alright, and Annie, there we go. Let's get this put down. Here we go. Italy, Zyra, LeBlanc... And you need to shrink it a little bit more, it looks like, to get it to fit. Ta-da! Okay. And, uh... Add title. This is DD92. So we're seeing Talon and Mundo locked in. Mundo's... Mundo's good. Zounds' Mundo is great. Executioner's Kong is a good item against him, and that's generally the only time you want to uh, build it, really. Let's put that right over here, that DD-92. Mundo, really good soak, really good chase, does a lot of damage, has good staying power, and his harass and delay is really powerful, much in the same way that Nidalee's is because of his cleaver throws. High Peoples on Talon. High Peoples is a great Talon. I would definitely rank him up there with the other great Talons uh, in the community. And Talon is, you pick the person that you want to kill, and then you stealth through and cutthroat, and then you just appear behind them, you turn them into a pace, and then you run out the other side of the fight before somebody can destroy you. His ult does a surprising amount of damage. Oopsies. Chat bands. Yeah, okay, Zounds is just re-giving me the chat bands. Hey, thanks for the uh, PM there, Zounds, I appreciate it. I like it when the players help uh, look out for us casters. That's real nice of you guys. We're seeing Heimerdinger and Maokai also being locked in. Now, Maokai is a common pick that we see in Dominion competition. Good crowd control, long-range harass, durable character, but more importantly is that ultimate man. Vengeful Maelstrom, with all the damage reduction that it brings, is amazing for team fights, especially amazing for defending on points. If a Maokai is hanging out on a point, just don't don't dive that. Pick a fight somewhere else. Force him off of that. Get him to put down his eventual maelstrom, and then drag the fight out of it because it's extremely difficult to uh, it's extremely difficult to fight him in that. And Heimerdinger, we're probably gonna see Monster SS4 Heimerdinger bottom. Heimerdinger tends to be pretty gankable until he gets his Wooglets. Um, he's better than he used to be with the uh, Heimerdinger changes that have happened recently, but he still does suffer to getting uh, beaten up a little bit. He can still be counterpicked by a couple of champions, if you know the champions to use. And Monster SS4 is a really good Heimer. Um, probably the best one I can think of, because of how often he uh, plays it in competition. It's pretty solid. Oh, there's that we're seeing Carnivia, potentially, and Sauron. Remember, we haven't seen a lot of Anivia in competition, and Carnival played just an absolutely amazing game with it. And we haven't seen it too much since, but seeing that highlight, man, we might get to see Carnival uh, go nuts with it, man. He had just some amazing walls. So much zoning ability. Anivia, not very good at all at retreating from fights, though. She's pretty bad at it. We're seeing Twisted Fate. And Twisted Fate can go AD or AP. It's generally been a little bit more popular overall to run him as AP. But with the global map presence and a very spammable stun, Twisted Fate can be a solid pick. He is very easily killable and lacks an escape, so he does a very poor job of being able to leave fights. Can be uh, pretty.
pretty dangerous. There's a few videos in Dominion competition of Tootles, like, really beating people up with Twisted Fate from back in, like, Dominate Dominion 20s or so. But we haven't really seen a good Twisted Fate in competition uh, regularly. So, kind of interesting to see these uh, people getting picked up here. It looks like after the trades, we are going to see Carnival on Nivea, Sauron TF, MKH over there. MMKH with Mundo. Zounds on Zinzao. Zinzao. Is it? Nope. A little more shuffling going on. Are they doing this just to mess with me? That is a possibility. I like Zinzao a lot. He's a champion that I've put a lot of work into. I'm learning how to play. And it just comes down to when you use Audacious Charge. And... His armor pen is very nice. Brings an airborne to the table. Zinzao is pretty solid. You can play him a little bit assassin-like, but since they have a Talon with them, I feel like we would see Zin go a little bit more tanky. Now, let's see if the blockers are fixed for this week, guys. Whoop. They are! Aha! Excellent. So you can see the summoner spells without that weird gray box on them that has been fixed. And let's let's not mess up the counter for this week. Um, um, let's see, client one zero players slash casters. There we go. We're gonna have a score for things happening. It's gonna be in the lower left hand corner. If I can find the top of this to minimize it. There we go. Where's the edge of it at? I can't. Hold on. I can't grab it. It's too small. There we go. Let's put this over here in the corner. There we go. So the goal is to keep that... Uh, the goal is to beat the client by the end of the tournament. That is our goal. So there's no item counter. There's just going to be an us versus the client. Take a look at spells here, guys. Uh, no one's taken anything with updated art. Not too shocking. A lot of ignites. A lot, a lot, a lot of ignites going on. Now, on the left-hand side, that is mostly to deal with Mundo. On the right-hand side, it's a little bit to deal with Maokai, and also a little bit just to kill people, because true damage is nice. I love you, Zanbot. That is, whoever added that command is the best. I love that. Looks like you missed one, though. Alright. Spectator delay taking down. Now we're going to bring this first game. This is going to be the round of... Uh, let's glance the black the bracket real quick here. Uh, for anyone who uh, hasn't seen what's going on with it this week. Take a uh, quick glance at it. This is going to be a round of 32 game. It's going to be Jellyfish Necklace versus Dono Ninjas. I uh, uh, want to say good luck to uh, Band of Mercenaries, Gung Ho Gun Line, and his team. Uh, they have a uh, pretty nice bracket this week. They might be able to uh, take a third or fourth place. It'd be real cool to see them accomplish that. A J4 helmet, Kappa. Fancy, I approve. I highly approve. Alright, now at the loading screen. Going into this first game of the evening. Jellyfish Necklace on the top half. Dango, Dono Ninjas, excuse me, on the uh, bottom, or on the right half of the screen. Um, Jellyfish Necklace's team, Circle Phoenix playing as Bran, Kavi playing as Maokai, Foe Orden Borzen playing as Pantheon, Monster SS4, Heimerdinger, and Zovia playing as Edlis. On the other team, on Dongo Ninjas' team, 
Emperor High Peoples playing as Talon, Zounds playing as Zin Zhao, Carnival playing as Anivia, or Carnivia, rather, Sauron with Twisted Fate, and MMKH as Dr. Mundo. I am one out of one of your commentators today. I am Gander of the gaming clan Vato Clan, and River's computer barfed uncontrollably, and she's trying to fix it. If able to do so, uh, she will join me later for later games. Gunline in the chat with the best emote, the win. I love the win bottle. Makes me very happy. Uh, big thank you to Gung Ho Gun Lion for a couple weeks ago putting the the Windex bottle with the Santa hat in the chat, the number one best emote on all of Twitch. He was able to put that there for us. I got a screen cap of it. I like the PAX TF. It's pretty awesome looking. A lot of good skins on that team. Black Frost, Nivea, PAX TF, Warring Kingdom, Zin. I got Warring Kingdom Zins out of a mystery gift once, man. Mystery gift is freaking cool. And there we go. We got this going on, and I have a new overlay to test on the in-game. So let's get that uh, picked up here real quick. Yeah, Rip in Peace Claw Z emote. Let's see if I can find it in my list here. Nope, that's the LOL Pro one. That's the post game one. Uh I know I copied it. It's possible we're missing the in game overlay. Well, I am missing the in game overlay. Uh oh. How many more seconds do I have? Twenty? Okay, we're going to roll with the old one for a second. And then I'll find the other one in between games. Whoop. There we go. And... You know what? I can fill in the team names later. Sorry, I couldn't find the new overlay. Because it's not in the right folder. So we'll have to worry about that later on. Spider! It's actually a flower. At least, uh, Death Blossom at least has a flower for a whatever a spider's butt part is called. I don't remember my my uh, insect anatomy or not insect, excuse me, arachnid anatomy rather. Both teams heading up to the top part of the map. Circle Phoenix not connecting with the seer. That's okay. He still has plenty of mana, and there's a lot of standing around and poking and waiting for an engagement to go here at the windmill fight. Now remember, the windmill fight is optional. You don't necessarily have to fight the windmill fight, but whoever gets a hold of it gets a good lead uh, in map control going into the first part of the game. If you give that up to your opponent, ooh, high people's getting stunned up here. And if you with the wall zones coming around for the back of that, he is able to connect with Circle Phoenix and pick up the KB there. They're able to take down Pantheon afterward, turn their attention over to Zovia because Zovia is the next most damaging champion, and leaving Maokai for last. See one person going around from each side that disables Maokai from being able to escape very easily because if he runs one way, he runs into Zin. If he goes the other way, he runs into Talon. Very good fight up there at the top. Uh, Sauron has been able to take down Monster SS4 down here in the bottom part of the map. Pantheon and Brand coming down for the gank here. Circle Phoenix is able to connect with him, tags him with the pillar. Gets stunned by Sauron. Foe Ord and Borzen coming around from the back. MKH going down there to help his ally out. Good cleaver! on Circle Phoenix, but it looks like Zovia is going to be able to take Sauron down. 2v2 down here in this location for the moment. Zovia retreating, taking that damage from MMKH's Mundo there. Looks like Zovia going for the stun once he has it up. No, nope, looks like MMKH is uh, just going to be able to get away. He just decides to break off from that. And OH! GET TWISTED FADED, Elise! Sauron hitting that level 6, teleporting across the map, and throwing some cards down on Elise, sending her straight back to the summoner platform. That's what I like to see from a Twisted Fate player. Monster SS4, Heimerdinger not very good at pulling off a 1v3 when he hasn't had time to set turrets up, unfortunately. So looks like they're going to pick up this bottom point here, off to a very, very solid start. Picking up that uh, bottom point. It looks like they're going to break off. They're going to give that one up when Monster SS4 comes back. He should be able to pick it up no problem. Unless Sauron hangs around to check on it. 
Now they have the refinery neutral, which really hurts them. So I'm going for a little bit of kiting action against Kavi here. But uh, he's going to break it off. And you can see how he's hovering around this lower part of the map. He can respond to things going on down bottom if he wants to. Good positioning on him. And if anyone tries to break across and get a play going, he'll be there to give vision to his team so they can intercept that action. Ooh, Kavi being caught there. Carnival the wall, not quite long enough to block him off yet. Kavi is going to be picked off by Twisted Fate. Double kill for Sauron Twisted Fate. And uh, they're going to go ahead and sweep on through to the refinery. There are currently no revives available, so those all have to go through those timers. That point is going to be turned around completely and captured. Monster SS4 using this opportunity to try and get across the map. Nope, he just wants to set up a turret there at the top and try to spot for people. But because of the range limitation on the turrets now, it is going to turn off momentarily. So there you go, turret shutting down, and its vision radius greatly reduced in the process. So he's only going to see it if people walk directly over it, which is a possibility. And he's going to see MK step directly across it. This monster SS4 now retreating. Is going to be cut off by High Peoples, however, there's that cutthroat straight through the monster SS4. And he gets a free trip back to the summoner platform. Committing a lot of people down to the bottom, though, leaves the top part of the map a little bit ill-defended. And Zinzo is going to be on his way up there. Circle Phoenix being caught with a stun. Pantheon looks like he's coming down here and is going to be able to chase Sauron's TF away. They have been able to interrupt Zovia, and oh dear, being able to kill Zovia that quickly means bad things for Kavi. Good wall from Carnival, and with Zalan standing in the open walkway, filling in the wall means Kavi had to turn around, walk through the enemy's damage in order to try and be able to escape, which is a position you don't want to find yourself in. But it shows very good awareness by Zalan's Zin for saying, hey, this wall is incomplete, he wants to try to walk out that way, I'm going to step in front of him, I'm going to stand in this shattered walkway, and uh, make sure that the heroes can't get across. Fo Ord and Borzen getting taken down in the bottom part of the map. Mal coming down here to defend. Is he going to get the sapling interrupt, but is it going to be enough with those minions there? Nope. Minions are going to be able to pull off the neutral. Fight not going so great for Kavi. And oh, Sauron actually picking up the KB there. High people's not able to connect with the damage fast enough. Sauron having a pretty good game on TF. One kill a minute right now. Six at six minutes. Very good. That turret capture, though, puts a lot of hurt on Monster SS4, though. And he is going to be defeated. High people's hanging around that low health can easily be finished off if Phil Ward and Borzen is able to get in range. That rake is going to slow him down and prevent him from being able to get any closer. Finally, once again, unfortunately, uh, taken. The last time that Jellyfish Necklace was able to group up and go for a really, really good fight, the enemy had the map control and the vision advantage, and they were able to win that. And they are still retaining map control because the Jellyfish Necklace having to recapture their points keeps them in specific areas of the map. And then their active pressure over near this speed shrine is keeping them to be able to move out without uh, them being able to be hidden from the enemy. Kavi being able to slip through a little part of the wall right there. Carnival going for the everything else other than the wall ability-wise. So if the game keeps going the way it is going, we may not see full-size walls. And oh, that cleaver spiderlings were not pulled in enough to be able to block for that. There's one neat thing about Elise and the spiderlings is that in her spider form, occasionally they will block skill shots, and that can come in quite handy. Bottom point still under control. High Peoples wants to uh, make sure that stays in their control. So he's going to move around that area of the map. Pops the Yomus and ooh, goes for the stealth. Gets through to Circle Phoenix. Combo for half the health and then is very able to easily finish him off. And looks like Foe is heading down to the bottom. But no, instead he's going to turn his attention up toward the uh, top part of the map. Monster SS4 throwing down a turret there. High Peoples puts a little bit of damage on Mao. Excuse me, a lot of damage rather. Zounds goes in for a little bit more hurt on him. And with that Brutalizer plus that passive from Zinzao, that's quite a lot of armor pen. And Dango Ninjas, or excuse me, Dongo Ninjas, with a very commanding showing here in this first game, going to take the victory over Jellyfish Necklace. And before we cut to the post-game screen, I am going to fill in the titles up at the top for you, so that we don't have to worry about that later. Helo Pilot, these teams got paired up this way just because, uh... Uh, that's just the way the bracket fill in. It's some RNG, man. Sometimes you get the bracket of death, and sometimes you uh, get a free trip into fourth place. Let's uh, make this real simple real quick. Your team 1 is going to be up on the left-hand side of the screen. Let's get that plugged in now so we don't have to worry about it anymore during the show. Where is it at? 
we go. So let's put that over here ish. Let's find the corner. There's the corner, and let's put that little team one right over here. And let's get the team one stuck up there at the top. Let's put team two over on the right hand side. Come here, edge. Now, if you're wondering why it's so difficult to resize these, it's because the edges of each one of the titles that you make is invisible. You can't actually see it. With a little bit of mouse over, you can see the outline briefly, um, but after that, it disappears again. So I just kind of have to move my cursor around until I can actually find it in order to plug it in. So there we go. I have those two teams up there, and we'll be able to plug those in in later games. So I'll go ahead and show the score screen for you. Okay, actually, I'm going to rename this scene real quick to the uh, in-game desktop scene, and then I'm going to rename the... Whoa! That's on this scene. Interesting. I thought I didn't have that scene anymore. Okay. And then we're going to make this one the post-game screen. So, where is my dude? Whoa. It, it didn't capture that. That's interesting. Let's try this again. Add screen region. Ta-da! The things that they don't tell you about running a stream is that you have to fight XSplit. Okay. And it looks like I do have an update. Uh, about what's up with the... Let's get this on here. Let's see, I don't have the new post game either. What's up with that? Alright, but this is the uh, post game screen here. Let's take a look at the uh, graphs. Actually, we don't take a look at the graphs really because, I mean, uh, they wouldn't tell us too much. So we're going to go ahead and uh, cut to a commercial real quick. And uh, we'll see you right back here for the next game in just a moment.